Get ready for a high school action on the place for local sports, The Score. Brought to you by Central Maine Community College. More than just a community college. Over 40 academic degrees and certificates and one of the lowest tuition rates in New England. Just go to cmcc.edu. Central Maine Motors Auto Group in Waterville. The dealer with no dog fees where cars and trucks cost you less. Online at cmautogroup.com. By Hammond Lumber Company, serving Maine and New Hampshire from 22 locations. Your building project partner, HammondLumber.com. Midstate Machine. Looking for a career? Check out the Machinist Development Program at MidstateUSA.com. Whittemore & Sons, your coyote tractor dealer. Sales and service by a family that cares. Somerset Stone & Stove, offering quality gas, pellet, and wood stoves and hardscape products. 201 Tire Battery & Service, your tire and battery experts on the Augusta Vassalboro line. P.J. Diggs, the excavation pros. If it's dirt, they do it. Renewal by Anderson, award-winning replacement windows and doors. Schedule your free consultation today. Assistance Plus, providing home care, behavioral health, and developmental services. Together, we can make a difference. Joseph's Market, Front Street, Waterville, famous for fine meats. The Harry J. Smith Company, 13 Sanger Avenue, Waterville, serving the Central Maine community for over 100 years. And by Computer Improvements, Water Street, Skowhegan, your headquarters for computer maintenance. Now, let's go live to Mike Violet and A.J. Knight. Good afternoon on a beautiful fall afternoon from Skowhegan Area Memorial High School. It is high school field hockey today on the score as the defending Class A champs, the Skowhegan River Hawks, host the Oxford Hills Vikings. I'm Mike Violet. AJ Knight is alongside. Galen Neal is our videographer here this afternoon. As you can see, we have a great day to play the field here, as is always the case, is in great condition. We've got two teams in Skowhegan and Oxford Hills that in Class A North, or no matter what region they've both been in at the same time, have had some epic battles over the years. However, this season their fortunes are completely different. Skowhegan is 6-1. and one. We had that one loss to Meselonski about 10 days or so ago, but they've bounced back since then and have won two straight. Meanwhile, for Oxford Hills, new coach this year, Ian Haley Holman, as she comes in and takes over the program where she had been an assistant for Lisa Gardner for a long time. And this year, They've had significant graduation losses, A.J., about 10 graduation losses. They do have a pretty good group of seniors, but as Haley pointed out to me today by email, not many of them have played at the varsity level. Yeah, I mean, we, the, the, we've seen that in some programs we've covered. Unfortunately, you know, when you can lean in and try and oh, – hold on. God bless you, young man. Yes, thank you. Excuse me. Gazan height. Um, we've seen that. I think it's some programs you cover, right, where you can, if you can lean in and try and make a run, you do so, and sometimes you have to deal with the consequences the year after. But, hey, you're only as good as your last game, right, and Oxford Hills is coming off a 2-1 overtime win. They are, and when I got my email back from – Haley Holman this afternoon, she said, the scouting report on us is this. We're essentially a brand new team this season. We've got a lot of upperclassmen, but the majority have never played at the varsity level until this year. Ten graduations out of their previous season's 11 starters last year. So That's a lot. She said, we're just hopeful of giving Skowhegan a half-decent game here this afternoon, and a lot of the responsibility is going to fall on senior goalkeeper Gabby Wright, who's one of those upperclassmen replacing a graduated senior from last year. Obviously, she's going to get a lot of work today because we know the Skowhegan team can just absolutely start early and go all game long with offensive opportunities. They're such a great club. Yeah, we've seen the Skowhegan team since the season opener, but the last time we were in Skowhegan for field hockey, field hockey was, of course, the game they opened against Brewer. And in that game, I, I, I think they outshot the Witches over the game 23-1 to or something like that. Yeah. So, you know... For Oxford Hills, I think their goalie's definitely going to have to stand on her head. And, and for them, I think it's much like the one thing Meselonski was able to do is possession. Obviously, Skowhegan's not going to shoot at goal. If you can possess the ball, that's what's going to be so important. But funny enough for you, Mike, the Riverhawks actually have a script. So, 
in their uh, seven games, they have in their seven games they have five shutouts, right? So you score zero, you lose. If you score one, which is what Mount Area did, you go to overtime. Unfortunately, you still lose. And if you score two, you win. So those are your three choices thus far in the season for the Riverhawks. Zero, yeah. one, or two. And when you look at Skowhegan's lineup, the choices are just multiple. You go up front, you get players like Laney LeBlanc and Layla Conway and Ellie Quinn. You go to the midfield, you find Sedalia Savage there and others. You go back and play defense, you got Jayla Gentry to deal with. So strength at every level of the game and in goal. A solid year from Michaela Provost so far. Yeah, I think she's she's... Responded when called upon, hasn't been called upon a ton because the de- the team has been so good overall. I think the one thing uh, that I'm just curious to see since we haven't seen them since Meselonski, I thought Savage was really well contained by Meselonski, and I think a player of her caliber, that can't, doesn't happen very often. Well, uh, going back to that game, Meselonski took it right to Skowhegan, but not every team can do that. Not no, every team has no. got the skill people to do that. I mean, it's great for Oxford Hills to come out here and say, yeah, we're going to take it to them, but you don't have the depth of talent. Meselonski was able to do it. They forced the issue, and that's why the Eagles won 2-1. to one. Yeah, I mean, again, you're talking about culture. There's a reason why the coaches won 20 state championships, over 600 victories. Yeah, and there's a great culture at Oxford Hills, but right now it may be one of those in-between sort of bridge seasons yeah. for the Vikings with a new coach and a new cast of characters in the starting lineup. We'll take a timeout. We'll come back with field hockey. It's Oxford Hills. It's Skowhegan. It's from Skowhegan. We're back right after this. This is high school field hockey on the place for local sports. Sports Radio 1160 WSKW. The score. Central Maine Community College in Auburn. Over 40 academic degrees and programs recognized as some of the best in the United States. Nursing, criminal justice, forensic, psychology, IT, education, culinary arts, and so much more. Offering one of the lowest tuition rates in New England, plus a top-seeded national champion producing athletics department. Central Maine Community College in Auburn. Find your passion. Go to cmcc.edu. Over 30 years ago, Paul and Jonna Bowen set out on a mission to help aging Mainers stay in their own homes. Assistance Plus grew from their passion, dedication, and integrity, where clients come first. Today, Assistance Plus serves not only the elderly, but clients with developmental and behavioral health challenges. Assistance Plus, here for you today and through all points of your life. For us, it's a family business that is steeped in tradition. You know, our relationship with Waterville goes back a long ways. Over the years, we've been fortunate enough to grow and we've been able to grow with the town. We look at the work that we do as something bigger than just the sale of a car or the servicing of an automobile. We're here to be a part of something bigger than just ourselves by giving back to the community with our time and our energy because it's all about taking care of people. Notice the price of gas and oil lately? Thinking about a pellet stove? Pellets are a renewable resource that are economical and pellet stoves don't have to be ugly or loud. Come talk to us at Somerset Stone and Stove. Let us explain why now is the best time to have your pellet stove installed. Wouldn't you love to have a gas stove or fireplace designed for your home? Let Somerset Stone and Stove design and install a Regency gas stove or fireplace that is just right for you. Let us customize your Regency gas stove or fireplace while you enjoy the beauty and warmth. Visit Somerset Stone and Stove in Oakland. When you're ready to tackle your next building project, no matter how big or small, depend on Hammond Lumber Company for the products and services you need. The knowledgeable staff at Hammond Lumber will be with you every step of the way and keep your project on schedule. From free estimating and project planning to design and drafting services, an extensive product inventory with a wide variety of brands to choose from, and of course, Hammond delivers from any of the locations across Maine and New Hampshire. Hammond Lumber Company, your building project partner. Looking to begin or further your career in manufacturing and don't know where to start? Miss State Machine is in need of CNC machinists at our Winslow facility where we manufacture components for some of the most exciting industries, aerospace, defense, power generation. I'm Jeremy Stanford, Manufacturing Manager, and I personally want to invite you to come learn about the great pay and benefits MidState Machine has to offer. To apply, visit MidStateUSA.com. That's MidStateUSA.com, an equal opportunity employer. Come grow with us. Whittemore & Sons, your Coyote Tractor Dealer. Dependable sales and service for over 50 years. 
We are located on the Waterville Road in Skowhegan. Sales and service by a family who cares. I came for a visit and I just fell in love with it. They just want to see you be you and like just excel. There's a lot of opportunities here. It really gives me time to figure out what I want to do with my life. It's a good stepping stone to get to where you want to be. The tuition is definitely part of what brought me here. You know, credits transfer, that's huge, especially for a community college when you're trying to figure out what you want. CM's the best place. Honestly, it's the best place. you got to be here to experience it. Randy Belanger purchased the Harry J. Smith Company over seven years ago, knowing his customers expected the same quality service as they have always received for over 100 years. With 10 bays and 12 employees, we can have most of your repairs done the same day. Whether it's on your car, truck, or RV, we can handle it. Just call us and let us go to work for you. The Harry J. Smith Company, 13 Sanger Avenue in Waterville, keeping your vehicle on the road for over 100 years and doing it the right way. Oh, please start. You wouldn't allow your car to bypass its maintenance, would you? Hey, Jen, would you look this up on your computer? Oh, wish I could. This office computer is so slow. How about your computer maintenance? Trust the pros at Computer Improvements. They can come on site or stop by. Handling general maintenance, antivirus protection, hardware upgrades, and Computer Improvements can set you up with solid-state hardware memory, giving your operating system wicked fast response time due to less moving parts. So your day isn't like this. Oh. Contact Computer Improvements to schedule your service today. Computer Improvements, downtown Skowhegan. Nothing brings people together like good food. So when you're cooking for the ones you love, why trust anyone but Joseph's Market? Joseph's Market is famous for their fine meats. Plus, no one makes sausage like Joseph's. They have 32 rotating flavors like Mexican chorizo, teriyaki pineapple, or spinach and feta. So there's something for everyone. You know, an apron is just a cape worn backwards. So be a superhero at your next cookout with fresh meat and sausage from Joseph's Market on Front Street in Waterville. Find them at josephsmarketmain.com and like them on Facebook. Book. All right, Mike Violet, AJ Knights, back here live at Skowhegan Area Memorial High School. And there are, were a couple of game time decisions on some key players in this game because of injury. And we have found out for sure. Watch it there, Brian. As we maneuver here in tight quarters and move a speaker, we have found out that Sedalia Savage is a scratch today for Skowhegan. Obviously, that is a huge loss for the Riverhawks, one of their best players in the middle of the field, and also Tristan Derenberger, the best player on the Oxford Hills team, is also out today, too. So two game-time decisions, neither of which goes in favor of the team making said game-time decisions. No, I mean, we, we just talked about Savage in the pregame, talking about how important she is to this team, and then, uh, like you said, not dressing. For Oxford Hills, a team that's brand new despite the upperclassmen, you know, and I'm told Sedalia Savage, a concussion at Mesolonsky, so that's why oh, she is out. So. That's unfortunate. So that is the deal there. Thanks to Brian for the info. Oxford Hills out in the green. Even I can tell that. <laughs> Trimmed in white. <laughs> Better than those Lawrence jerseys. Yeah, the Lawrence, the new Lawrence jerseys as an athletic director. Have you, you heard about that? you got to check out our, our game at centralmainsports.com. Go to the vault and look for the Coney Lawrence game from Friday night and check out the new Lawrence jerseys where the numbers are unreadable. Yeah, they're silver, right? Yes, they are. On the other hand, here today we have the green of Oxford Hills with white numbers, the white of Skowhegan with black numbers. How about that? So easy to read. So we can tell. Thank and you. What a gorgeous day here today, too. too. And this field is the best natural grass field hockey field in Maine, bar none. There's Quinn immediately getting it inside, and Oxford Hill's trying to clear, and you don't want to mess around with Skowhegan here at all. Kaylee Bruce up there for the Riverhawks takes it away. Bruce with Gentry back, gets it back to her. Pass bounces over the stick, and it's picked up by Oxford Hills, and the Vikings break it out. This is Lily Hammond blocked by Gentry, but it goes out. And these are big. This right here, specifically this part of the field, is going to be big for Oxford Hills. If you're going to have a chance today, you have to be able to get it across midfield and get it into the offensive zone. Anna Jendrick lays it back. Mm. It's off a Skowhegan player, Sophie Noyes, and it ends up out. So it'll be a free hit here for the Vikings. This is Ava Kenaw, who wears number zero. And 
She is blocked there by Conway, and it's a free hit for Skowhegan. Conway blasts it up, but Kenaw able to stop it. Now Conway takes it away right on the sideline. Stick handling move on the backhand. Goes down, tries to swoop a backhander in front. It gets there, but it's cleared away. Quinn right there to keep it alive. Also up there is Noise. Quinn fans on a shot, and this is going to go in the other direction. That uh, miss and it means the stick's going to come up high and going to get the whistle going the other way for Oxford Hills. So, again, Sedalia Savage out for Skowhegan with a concussion and the after effects, and Tristan Derenberger just flat out in street clothes for Oxford Hills. I don't know what the injury is. Unfortunately, the AD wasn't up here to tell us. Like they were Right. Scout well, Hagen. I did talk to Haley Holman by email today, and she said there were some injury issues and that there would be decisions made at game time, and the decision was made. She said, we want to get there, go through warm-ups, see who's got what, and obviously Darren Berger not able to go, one of the top athletes at Oxford Hills High School. On the girls' side of things, softball, we saw her last spring at the University of Maine when Skowhegan played uh, yes. against Oxford Hills. Good game. Basketball, she's a terrific athlete. All right, Oxford Hills advances over midfield. Here come the Vikings. Down the left side. And the pass ahead to Cora Pierce. Pierce broken up by Gemma Kennedy. Kennedy can't get it out. Did block it, though, and now slaps it up. Skowhegan should get a breakout here. Grace Mayo over midfield, slowed down by Vita Person. In the middle, Skowhegan, but it's stolen. Oxford Hills able to run it off here. This is Sophia Estes. Near side to Bean, Bryn Bean goes by Gentry, midfield. Ball pops out right in the middle there for Laney LeBlanc. And Laney, one of the Skowhegan captains. Fires it ahead, looking for Atwood on the far side. Doesn't connect, and it's out amongst the crowd over there. I will say one of the things, Oxford Hills has struggled to score this season, but in terms of their goals, they have uh, limited the amount of goals that have been scored. So, I mean, nobody, I think, would expect Oxford Hills to win in a shootout. If you're, we're going to beat Skowhegan, we're going to upset them. It was going to be in a grimy, grinded-out game. Gentry tries to scoot it up to Kaylee Bruce. Doesn't work. Oxford Hills able to keep it in. Slamming it down low for the Vikings is Hannah Jendrick. And a whistle. Just as LeBlanc was going to touch it. And it is going to be a Vikings ball. A free hit for Hannah Jendrick. Jendrick passes down the sideline. There is Bean. Bean trying to get it inside the circle. Neither team has really been successful doing that yet. And running it off now for the Skowhegan River Hawks lane to LeBlanc. LeBlanc gets stuffed there by Jendrick. LeBlanc with a blindside check on Bean. Now Gentry up to Conway. Layla can't handle right into the Skowhegan bench. Minus that initial first flurry from Skowhegan. Oxford Hills done a nice job trying to contest possession and now have possession. Yep, this is what they got to do. This is their version of taking it to Skowhegan. Yeah, they're doing a pretty good job right now. Hannah Jendrick. Keeps it in. Pass back to the middle to Millet. Free hit here for Millet. Slides it over, but right to a Skowhegan player over there. Was picked off by Kaylee Bruce. Bruce contests it down the sideline. It scoots out of bounds ahead of Cora Pierce, and this will be a Skowhegan ball here. Lucia Siren. Intercepted. And then Siren broke it up. Sierra, Sierin, that is, rolls it up to Sophie Noyes. Midfield. Boy, give Oxford Hills credit. A nice start here. Okay, and Joseph lost it. Now the River Hawks able to get it over midfield. A whistle there on the far side as Sierin was trying to make a move, and it's called back. It'll go to Oxford Hills, and then they knock it out of bounds. I trying to make a long pass there. Couldn't control it. Knocked it out on that far sideline. 9.20 to go first period. Nobody's come close to a goal-scoring opportunity yet. Here's Conway, and it rolls right over Layla's stick. A second time Layla tried to track one down. That one a much longer pass, obviously, in a bouncing ball. But Scott, he can try to get some of those long passes. Ooh, a slip right there. Wow. Going down really, really hard was Jendrick. I thought she might have pulled something, and, of course, Conway breaks in, and it's kicked away by Wright. I really thought that 
Gendrick hurt herself as she slipped on the turf. Yeah, they didn't look comfortable. No. I, think I, know, I know I'd be, uh, be uh, wheeled to the hospital right now if I felt like that. But. Yeah. It's the definition, I think, of home field advantage. Gentry didn't get much on that shot. Now picks off the clearing pass. Jayla looking to set it up to Quinn. Quinn at the edge of the circle. Fanning on the clear is Oxford Hills. Gentry there again. She is so good. Gentry knocks it in. It's loose. A shot. It's blocked right in front. Cleared away by a defender. As Oxford Hills avoids it there. And they get it out past Gentry finally. And as Lily Hamlin, a Hammond ready to pick it up, we get a whistle. Yeah, looking at this replay here, kind of in the scrum, Oxford Hills looked like they were initially going to push it out and then finds its way. I think the noise tried to get a shot there down to Bruce. Bruce just couldn't get anything on it. You got somebody hurt somewhere? Schreiner, yep. Ellie Quinn. Might have taken either a stick to the head or a ball to the head. And very quickly, the Skowhegan trainer running out. And Ellie, as you can see, walking off under her own power. As she got popped, Kaylee, uh, Callie Price, that is, comes in. That last thing you want to see is more injuries. Feels like this year, not only in the NFL season, but it seems like Central Maine Sports has dealt with more than their fair share of injuries to start this season across sports. So Quinton walks it off. We'll keep an eye on her. Certainly doesn't appear to be dazed or confused or anything, but she clearly got something to the head somewhere. So we'll keep an eye on her. Meantime, we're back underway and again coming in for Scowheek and Kelly Price. Scowhegan with the ball. It's an old hockey face off, yes. isn't it? Lucia Searin clears it up right to the top of the circle. Conway. Conway just gets inside, looking to tee it up. Couldn't get the shot off. LeBlanc there, two and a whistle, and it's going to go on a free hit to Oxford Hills. Nice job by the Vikings there to quickly double up Conway and try and neutralize that threat. Steele breaking it in noise. Noise, check that. That's Grace Mayo to the edge of the circle. Mayo now in the corner, looking to wheel. Gets it back out deep to Atwood. Now deeper. Now to the top to Siren. Lucia to the circle, looking there for LeBlanc. Laney goes between the legs of a defender, got a shot off. It got blocked in front. It's loose, being tapped at right there at the goal mouth, and it's in. Skowhegan scores. There's a whole lot in that one. And fishing it out of there with Sophie Noyes. So I'm going with her, 28. And it's one nothing Skowhegan. Take a look at that. That was that Conway shot here, which we'll get to see in this longer uh, replay right here. Initially blocked there. And then it pops up. And then Noyes, I think, just, just able to get a stick on it, like you said. Yep, a scramble in front. And it was loose, and as is often the case, especially when Skowhegan is there, somebody finds a loose ball and pops it in, and Noyes with a goal. 7.50 the time, one nothing Skowhegan. An excellent start by Oxford Hills, but once they got pressed deep, Skowhegan able to score. Violation here on Conway. It's going to go back to the Vikes. And side official stops, then... Tells him to start. Here's Noise with a steal. Noise over to Conway. Layla down the left side. Layla wheels away from Jendrick. Up a hit Noise in the feet and bounces away, and it's going to go back to Oxford Hills. Today's game is brought to you by Central Maine Community College in Auburn. More than just a community college with over 40 academic degrees and programs, one of the lowest tuition rates in New England. Find your passion, cmcc.edu. one nothing. Skowhegan cleared inside by Abby Tui, and that's a violation on the Vikes. So it'll go up to Laney LeBlanc. Uh, Quinn here looks like she's moving to the front is with her equipment. We'll see if she checks back in, but she looks all right. She is a deadly goal scorer for Skowhegan. Sedalia Savage talking to her right now. Sedalia obviously knows a lot about 
getting hit in the head because that's why she's not playing. Well, unfortunate to hear that. One of the premier field hockey players in the state. Ball bounces by Siren, goes back to Conway. Or check that LeBlanc to midfield. Skowhegan looking to break it out. Siren down the right side, and this will roll just barely over the end line. Now that one looking for that long pass to get it in the box and kind of scrum it out, but just got a little bit too much of that one. Pass up is blocked by Daja Albarico. Albarico fires a shot coming out of the net there to kick it away is right. The Oxford Hills goalkeeper. Yeah, I think if you're a goalie against Skowhegan, we know you've got to be aggressive because there's going to be, you're going to face a lot. You've got to be able to, I think, to be aggressive and, and try and get ahead of some of those clears and kick it out to let your defense recover. Any time that you've got a better than good chance to get to a loose ball, you should do it. I agree. Against Skowhegan. All right, outside the circle, Skowhegan not able to get it in, cleared out by Oxford Hills. Outside the 25, and it's stolen right back by Lucia Siren. Siren up to LeBlanc. Laney spins in, stops at the top, inside the circle, lets it fly. I think Wright had to make a move on it there. Loose ball, she made another save. She comes out and kicks at that, and we get a whistle. As noise was right there, it's going to go to Oxford Hills. Yeah, I think she stopped that LeBlanc shot, who kind of stopped, paused, and then let fire. And then again, the scrum, trying to see who eventually got one back on goal. I think that was Bruce finally put one in, and I think that Bruce put one in, and then I think uh, trick down here. There's a scramble in front with uh, Kirian. Mason Atwood in a battle over there on the far side by her and Tui, and eventually Tui came away with it but cleared it out, and Skowhegan right back with it. We're down to 3.35 to go in the first. And this is what we've seen Skowhegan do to so many teams, right? They, it seems like it, sometimes it takes that first goal, and then they just kind of constrict that possession. All right, free hit here. It's driven up by Bean, but Gentry, so good on the back line, now stops, makes a move to the middle. Rolls it over to far side to Albarico. Albarico handles. Albarico tries to go inside to noise. It is blocked. Right back, Skowhegan's Mason Atwood fired it in. Atwood outside the circle, taken away from her by Abby Tui. Tui, and we get a violation there on Atwood, and it's going to go to Oxford Hills on a free hit. Vikings up the sideline, and unfortunately they don't handle it. It rolls out of bounds into the crowd. Type of mistakes you can have, especially clearing, because Skowhegan's already going to make it that much tougher on you trying to get it back over midfield. All right, flipped up. LeBlanc. LeBlanc down the right side. LeBlanc being defended there by Kea Joseph, and it's a violation on Skowhegan. At this point, I think Skowhegan's doing the Vikings a little bit of favor in some of these whistles that they're creating. Up the sideline, blocked there by Callie Price. Price with a free hit. That's blocked by Oxford Hills. Price steps into the pass. Now, Siren. Siren over to an open side, trying to get it down low. They do to. Layla Conway. Conway tried to center it to her running buddy there, Laney LeBlanc. It didn't work out for her. Now Haney. Back to Siren. Siren up to Noise. Noise collects. Noise goes inside. Conway's there. Goaltender right comes out. Kicks at it. Now dives at it. And we've got a scrum in front. The ball pops free. Like you said, I'm with you. If there's a loose ball, you got to get to it, but you got to kick that sucker out. You do. You got to kick it as far as you can. And Wright did stop the ball, then couldn't clear. And finally, Oxford Hills does. 1.15 to go in the first period. 1 0 on a goal by Sophie Noyes for Skowhegan. Cleared up the sideline. Stopped by Atwood. Atwood to Siren. Siren. Wax it ahead. Goes over the stick of Haney. Left side, picked up there by Conway. Layla walking the tightrope there. Open on the drop pass to Siren. Siren poke checked away by Joseph. Siren back with it. Siren blocked by Joseph. 
Searon tries to collect it, does. Joseph goes down. This will be her ball. And Sear collected that thanks to a little bit of a shoulder tackle. 35 seconds left in the period. Joseph plays it back. Trying to spin up that far sideline there was Kennedy Mason Lee. Out of bounds with 17 seconds left. Knocked out by Atwood. Atwood with it now. Atwood clears it up. And Joseph comes away with it. She's just going to run the clock out. Yeah. Dangerous here. What exactly happened? A whistle. You get a chance to quick center. And it won't count as LeBlanc had it right there as the horn sounded. One done in Skowhegan in high school field hockey. And the Riverhawks with a one-goal lead on a goal by Sophie Noyes. The score at the end of one from Skowhegan. Skowhegan Riverhawks won Oxford Hills Vikings nothing. You're watching and listening to high school field hockey on the place for local sports. Sports Radio 1160 WSKW, the score. Nokian Tires, available at 201 Tire Battery and Service, Route 201, Vassalboro. Your complete auto center. Mechanics you can trust. Nokian Tires to keep you safe on the road. Plus, 201 Tire Battery and Service is a state inspection station. They have batteries and accessories, including custom battery cables available. And, of course, those great Nokian Tires. 201 Tire Battery and Service, Route 201, Vassalboro. At P.J. Diggs, they know septic systems. Maybe your existing system is failing or it's a new house lot. You need new installation. Call P.J. Diggs. They can bring their site evaluator to design the right septic system. Headed to camp? Ditch the outhouse for a newly installed system. How about a septic system for your campsite? Imagine your own private campground. Already have a septic design? P.J. Diggs can install it for you. Call 431-4299. That's 431-4299. At P.J. Diggs, they know septic systems. One. 31 Hinkley Road, Canaan. Are you fed up with high prices at the pump? Do monthly utility bills drain your wallet? If you're nodding your head yes, Renewal by Anderson is your best solution. They custom build and install weather tight replacement windows and back them with a generous, fully transferable limited warranty. Call now to schedule your free design consultation. Plus, take advantage of this limited time offer with incredible savings and attractive financing. The better way to a better window. Renewal by Anderson. Send. Mike Violet, A.J. Knight, our videographer is Galen Neal back here at Skowhegan Area Memorial High School. Skowhegan won. Oxford Hills nothing. Tomorrow, we're hiking up to Pittsfield. Foxcroft Academy at MCI in boys soccer. The last time we were up in that neck of the woods... Foxcroft Academy was playing Nokomis in baseball, remember? And it was a day that started out quite mild and ended up about 35 degrees. Well, tomorrow we're supposed to have highs in the 70s. So I can live with that. I think it'll be a much more pleasant day for boys' soccer tomorrow. Foxcroft Academy at MCI. That's at 3.30. On Thursday night, we're in Oakland for boys' soccer. Edward Little at Mesolonsky. 7 o'clock start there. And then Friday night, Levitt at Lawrence in high school football. That should be an interesting game. Game time, 7 o'clock, all here, video and audio, centralmainsports.com and 1160thescore.com, all brought to you by CMCC. Second period underway. Now, the one thing I remember besides the weather, because we all went dressed for summer, because it was summer and then yeah. it snowed on us. Here's Conway breaking in. Layla is checked. She gets around the check. Goaltender comes out right. Loose ball noise pokes at it. Now we've got a tussle for it. All kinds of sticks in there. Slapping at it is Skowhegan. Quinn back in the game. Can't keep it inside the circle, and Oxford Hill survives. Yeah, we'll see. Look at this as Oxford Hill tries to clear. I was just going to say real quick, the other thing I remember that besides the weather is both teams wore maroon. They did. It's a big help to me. That was miserable. But it's baseball. It's a little bit easier. That's it's not true. like Lawrence with those silver numbers on the jerseys Friday night in football. So Oxford Hill survives a flurry in front. And now it's cleared all the way in. Wright will watch it roll by the side of her net. And this will be an Oxford Hills ball. And remember, just as Mike told the Skowhegan AD, if you want to see those terrible Lawrence jerseys, because they were trending for all the wrong reasons, despite right. the fact they won big. Everything we ever do streams live and then is archived in the vault for free at centralmainsports.com. Absolutely. Every game we do is there. Go and watch them. And if you want to see those hideous numbers on the Lawrence jerseys, we don't care what reason you go there. Just go and click 
the vault. Right. You can go back to that Foxcroft Nokomis <laughs> game, actually, <laughs> if you want to, too. It's there. You'll have to dig for it for a yep. second, but you'll find it. Left my house. It was 72 degrees. By the time we got to the fifth inning in Newport, it was like 38. It was snowing. It was miserable. Yeah. It's a good thing I happen to have a parka in the car. <laughs> Not me. To wear with short pants. <laughs> Again, it's the reason why Ryan Bell wore jeans, I think, right. for the next like two weeks of broadcast. Yeah, I think it was like uh, at the height of summer in July when it was 95 <laughs> in Augusta doing Legion baseball where he finally gave up the ghost on those. Quinn with a slapper inside. The rebound, a kick out by right off the stick of Bruce. That was a great save, and I believe we're going to get our first penalty corner. How about this? Take a look at that. Quinn didn't get all of that, but a nice job there. On the fan there, the second one, Bruce got a good shot, and I think Oxford Hills was just kind of surprised there initially, but a nice save uh, yet again. And if you're going to beat Skowhegan, I don't care who you are, your goalie's going to have to stand on their head. Well, that was a terrific save there. Layla Conway. Wax it to the top to Quinn. Quinn to LeBlanc, makes a move inside the circle, a shot. It's blocked in front. Might have been Wright that made the save. The rebound, LeBlanc. LeBlanc to Quinn, top of the circle, bounces, a save by Wright, and that one is knocked out. That second one didn't quite make it all the way, but that first one definitely did from LeBlanc. And it's cleared out by Oxford Hills, and right now the Vikings are in survival mode. I want to amend my previous statement. Your goalie will have to, if you're going to upset Skowhegan, your goalie will have to stand yes. on their head. Yeah, your defenders are also going to have to have some welts, I think, from stopping shots. Yeah. I mean, you're going to have to take a lot for the team. Yes. All right. In the middle, Noise loses it to Joseph. A whistle, though. And referee Gary Gorman, and I'll talk more about Gary in a second. Uh-oh. He's a Waterville boy. We grew up together. <laughs> Atwood, back to Searin. Searin around a defender, clears it up. It rolls all the way through. Right there in front is Bruce. Can't make a move with it. Estes trying to get it out. And Skowhegan will start anew. Here's LeBlanc. A shot up right in front. Conway, open net. She could not get it in. And now it's in. A score by Skowhegan. I think. I think that was Quinn. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you here on the replay. LeBlanc, Bruce had a golden opportunity, just quite couldn't get a good contact with it. Conway on that cut across, though, was a nice job. Yeah, and actually, I believe that goal, looking at our replay here, Mike, is credited to uh, Mayo. Mayo, I think, shot that, and it just kind of found its way through everybody's right. feet. We'll give it to Grace Mayo. There is no announcement here of who scores goals. So. Oh, let me hop on the mic. <laughs> in our in our book, it's going in as Mayo until we hear and know otherwise, and it's a two-zip Skowhegan lead. It comes at 353 of the second, as the Riverhawks have just absolutely dominated here and have had pressure all second period long in the first four minutes plus. Yeah, I thought in the, like, after he kind of had an early, early flurry but didn't really get a shot going, Oxford Hills had some nice possession there. But then, man, the Riverhawks scored that goal and just feels like they boa constricted this game. All right, here's Quinn. That's the first boa constrictor reference I think you've ever made. I got you. Pretty impressive. I like to mix it up. I, don't, I want people to know my uh, next move. I mean, I'm not a snake guy. I can tell you that right now. I'm afraid <laughs> of garden snakes, for crying out loud. So, anyway, here's LeBlanc zigzagging Ooh. through the defense and then has it. Cherry picked away from her. Nice job by Abby Tui. Yeah, Tui with a pickpocket yep. there. LeBlanc was lining up to fire that one. All right, back out to midfield. Siren brings it in. Quinn back in the game. I might have mentioned that. She is back and seems to be fine. Wearing number 17 in white. Yeah, she seemed walking off the field to say she was okay. I think one of those moments where you just kind of kind of get your wits back about you where you just kind of realize what happened. Bell rung, whatever, yeah. although I don't think it was that serious. No. She was literally grinning as she walked off the field with the trainer. Yeah. So. Well, thanks for your eyes water. Nine and a half left in the first half. Two zip Skowhegan. Far side, it's Mayo. Mayo over the end line and out. A nice job by Oxford Hills there. She was trying to center that and just couldn't get it through. Problem is, though, this, again, we've seen Skowhegan do this as Oxford Hills. Even when they make a stop, the question, can you even get it past midfield? And normally the answer is no. Mm. Up the far sideline. Stop by Searin. Does a pirouette. 
Siren tied up there by Joseph. Free hit. Siren will whack it to the top of the circle to Noise. Noise takes it to the right, clears it inside diagonally, trying to pick it up there. Mayo, now a loose ball, and it is awarded to Oxford Hills. And the other problem is, too, I think, you know, when you talk about not being able to clear these balls, is it's not the first shot I feel like you really have to worry about, though you do. It's the second and third shots that come off the ricochet because Scalhegan is just so relentless. All right, Quinn fired it wide. Actually, it went in the net, but, of course, it was way outside the circle, so. No, that's not allowed. It is not. Oxford Hills ball. 2 nothing. Skowhegan. Goals by Noise and Mayo. Free hit here for the Vikes. This is Lauren Millett. Tristan Derenberger, the best player for the Vikings, not playing today. Injured. Sedalia Savage, concussion, not playing today for Skowhegan. So both have... Key players out. And I think that's one of the things you saw Scout Hegan, I don't want to say struggle with early, obviously, because they've really dominated time of possession, but she's such a playmaker from mm. that center, really, like the midfield center position. And so, obviously, it's a, a big adjustment not having her. She uh, kind of plays the same role that Lou Jane Algendi does for the Waterville girls soccer team that yes. we talk so much about. I would agree. Right in the middle of the field, th- making plays. I think a lot more hockey assists that obviously don't get recorded. Right. I hope she's all right, though, because obviously the other thing in time, but we mentioned it was from the Messalonsi game. They've played twice since then. Yes. Well, I think um, it's better to err on the side of caution. 100%. And when you're 6-1 and one, and you're the defending champs, you have... The luxury. The luxury of doing that with Savage. So Skowhegan is. I agree. To make sure that she's completely healthy. Gentry, free hit. Jayla fanned a swing and a whiff. And working it out now for Oxford Hills. Running it up the right side is Bean. Bryn Bean, she fanned on that, or partially fanned anyway. Skowhegan able to steal it. Working it ahead, Quinn. Quinn, up to Conway. Layla, up to Noise. It inadvertently skips back to Haney. Haney can't collect and keep it in. Now up the far side, Lily Hammond. For Oxford Hills, Hammond over midfield. Goes out, off Skowhegan. Riverhawks will put it into play. There's a whiff. That's like me and golf right there. They trying to hit it too hard. I don't think they left a divot. No. No divot. Joseph <laughs> trying to get it away here from Haney, and it's a free hit for the Vikes. A flick shot up. Goes by Siren. Oxford Hills with a chance on the edge of the circle, one of the few times they bend there, and, of course, it's immediately taken away by Gemma Kennedy. Kennedy up the far side. Up there it goes to Mayo. Mayo working it. Stolen by Oxford Hills. Now to Joseph. Joseph in the offensive zone. Picked up, though, by Kennedy. Now to Atwood. Atwood clears. Ahead to Noise. Noise pokes it ahead. Noise uses her speed to the middle. Noise dished it off there. Scout, he can look in a jump on it here. Kennedy... And it's poked away from her, and back it goes now to Bean and a whistle, and it's going to go to Skowhegan. Uh, Bean got a little bit too much uh, follow-through on that one. So it's a Skowhegan ball. Kennedy, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, Jayla Gentry. Gentry up to Haney. Haney blasted, it's blocked, and it's going to go to Skowhegan here right at the line. LeBlanc. Up to Noise, right there is Conway, and as soon as she was trying to get the ball, a whistle from the referee. Ref called time. Oh, I think he's pointing at you, Mike. I didn't call time. (laughs) I would not call time. Now we get Daja Albarico in for Skowhegan. I was going to say, the other silver lining of, of Savage not playing is obviously other players get to 
adjust trying to be that playmaker role, and obviously you get some big minutes as well for some other players that gives you depth later in the season. And as Conway was about to curl in the circle, a violation on Skowhegan. It will go Ooh. to Oxford Hills. Conway blocks it. Conway to Noyes. Noyes missed it. Noyes got it back. Noyes about 10 yards in front has it run off by Oxford Hills. Boy, the Riverhawks just relentless up there. Haney with a ball that was blocked, and it will go to green. Goes to the Vikes. A clear out right to the scores table. Not a good move. It's going to go right back to Skowhegan. It's underneath the scores table. At some point, Conway is going to curl in front of the goal, and it's not going to be a whistle, and she's yeah. going to put one on Cage. Gentry tried to clear it in, tried to get it up to Searin, didn't connect. Gentry runs it back down, though. And fires it in. Far side looking for Atwood. Atwood over there with Alberico. Not a LeBlanc. LeBlanc with Haney. Over to Haney. Haney lines it up inside the circle. She got checked from behind by Jendrick. Just enough to disrupt her shot. That was a heck of a back check there to stop what was going to be, I think, a missile on she Cage. She was going to let one fly. Yeah. Clear it out. Stop by Haney. Haney fans. Oxford Hills runs it off. 2.45 left in the first half. 2 nothing. Skowhegan goals in each period. Gentry. Back to LeBlanc. Not really any place to go forward with it. So she goes back to Kennedy. Kennedy. Up the right side, nice handle there by Atwood and a hard pass. Atwood down low, looking to get it on the sidelines to Alberico, too far ahead. And out it goes. A nice job by Oxford Hills. Again, you know, I know you're down 2 nothing, but even still against this Skowhegan team, minus Savage, you know, they can put up goals. Skowhegan plays it back to midfield. Callie Price now in the middle for Quinn. Quinn, a little wheel and deal, wins the battle with Joseph. Quinn fires it up, looking to get it to noise, top of the circle, and a whistle, and we have got a penalty corner here. Number two. Yeah, only, what, the second free yep. stroke? Again, Oxford Hills has done a nice yeah. job, I think, defensively. I mean, when you look at the, the penalty corners, two to nothing, that is, I think, surprising. Yeah. Again, and that's one of the things I noted. Oxford Hills, again, on the season has struggled to score goals. Defensively, though, they have limited the damage. It's not like they've gotten absolutely crushed. All right, Conway, the facilitator. Layla slaps it. Goes all the way back out to Kennedy. Kennedy winds up, shoots it in, looking for a tip, and it is in. Scores, Skowhegan. And I believe LeBlanc got it. Conway went and pulled it out of the goal. Yeah, well, I'm going to let you look at a replay. I'm taking a look for you right now. And then we will try to nail it down. It comes at 13.57. So Conway, uh, excuse me, LeBlanc let that go, but on the replay it's hard to tell if Conway got a tip or not. And I'm going to judge that they're, that that would be the art. usually the one who scores goes and gets it out, right? So we'll give it to Conway. So the Conway... Gets the simplest goal ever by just kind of being in the vicinity. <laughs> goal scorers find a way to do that, That's you know? True. That's what they do. They have the magic touch. So three zip Skowhegan on a goal by Conway, 1357. Also, well, impressive because I think you had the same thought I did. It looked like it was a miscommunication on that fr that free stroke because it went all the way out to right. almost quarter by or well past the box. Yeah. All right, back it goes to Kennedy, Gemma. Now to LeBlanc. LeBlanc, right side, Atwood couldn't handle it. However, jumping up there is Siren. Kept it alive, down to 20 seconds to go in the period. And the ball awarded to Oxford Hills. Vikings. Veda Person lost it. Skowhegan with 3-2. And that'll run the clock out here in the first half. And Skowhegan with a goal in the first. Two more in the second. 
And the River Hawks will take a three-goal lead into halftime, which is coming up, and it's brought to you by Hammond Lumber Company, serving Maine and New Hampshire. From 22 locations, your building project partner, HammondLumber.com. At the half in Skowhegan, the score, Skowhegan 3. And Oxford Hills nothing. We will be back after this on Sports Radio 1160 WSKW, the score. Central Maine Community College in Auburn. Over 40 academic degrees and programs recognized as some of the best in the United States. Nursing, criminal justice, forensic, psychology, IT, education, culinary arts, and so much more. Offering one of the lowest tuition rates in New England. Plus, a top-seeded national champion producing athletics department. Central Maine Community College in Auburn. Find your passion. Go to cmcc.edu. Over 30 years ago, Paul and Jonna Bowen set out on a mission to help aging Mainers stay in their own homes. Assistance Plus grew from their passion, dedication, and integrity, where clients come first. Today, Assistance Plus serves not only the elderly, but clients with developmental and behavioral health challenges. Assistance Plus, here for you today and through all points of your life. For us, it's a family business that is steeped in tradition. You know, our relationship with Waterville goes back a long ways. Over the years, we've been fortunate enough to grow and we've been able to grow with the town. We look at the work that we do as something bigger than just the sale of a car or the servicing of an automobile. We're here to be a part of something bigger than just ourselves by giving back to the community with our time and our energy because it's all about taking care of people. Notice the price of gas and oil lately? Thinking about a pellet stove? Pellets are a renewable resource that are economical and pellet stoves don't have to be ugly or loud. Come talk to us at Somerset Stone and Stove. Let us explain why now is the best time to have your pellet stove installed. Wouldn't you love to have a gas stove or fireplace designed for your home? Let Somerset Stone and Stove design and install a Regency gas stove or fireplace that is just right for you. Let us customize your Regency gas stove or fireplace while you enjoy the beauty and warmth. Visit Somerset Stone and Stove in Oakland. When you're ready to tackle your next building project, no matter how big or small, depend on Hammond Lumber Company for the products and services you need. The knowledgeable staff at Hammond Lumber will be with you every step of the way and keep your project on schedule. From free estimating and project planning to design and drafting services, an extensive product inventory with a wide variety of brands to choose from, and of course, Hammond delivers from any of the locations across Maine and New Hampshire. Hammond Lumber Company, your building project partner. Looking to begin or further your career in manufacturing and don't know where to start? Miss State Machine is in need of CNC machinists at our Winslow facility where we manufacture components for some of the most exciting industries, aerospace, defense, power generation. I'm Jeremy Stanford, Manufacturing Manager, and I personally want to invite you to come learn about the great pay and benefits MidState Machine has to offer. To apply, visit MidStateUSA.com. That's MidStateUSA.com, an equal opportunity employer. Come grow with us. Whittemore & Sons, your Coyote Tractor dealer. Dependable sales and service for over 50 years. We are located on the Waterville Road in Skowhegan, Sales and service by a family who cares. I came for a visit and I just fell in love with it. They just want to see you be you and like just excel. There's a lot of opportunities here. It really gives me time to figure out what I want to do with my life. It's a good stepping stone to get to where you want to be. The tuition is definitely part of what brought me here. You know, credits transfer, that's huge, especially for a community college when you're trying to figure out what you want. CM's the best place. Honestly, it's the best place. You gotta be here to experience it. Randy Belanger purchased the Harry J. Smith Company over seven years ago, knowing his customers expected the same quality service as they have always received for over 100 years. With 10 bays and 12 employees, we can have most of your repairs done the same day. Whether it's on your car, truck, or RV, we can handle it. Just call us and let us go to work for you. The Harry J. Smith Company, 13 Sanger Avenue in Waterville, keeping your vehicle on the road for over 100 years and doing it the right way. 
Oh, please start. You wouldn't allow your car to bypass its maintenance, would you? Hey, Jen, would you look this up on your computer? Oh, I wish I could. This office computer is so slow. How about your computer maintenance? Trust the pros at Computer Improvements. They can come on site or stop by. Handling general maintenance, antivirus protection, hardware upgrades, and Computer Improvements can set you up with solid-state hardware memory, giving your operating system wicked fast response time due to less moving parts. So your day isn't like this. Contact Computer Improvements to schedule your service today. Computer Improvements, downtown Skowhegan. Nothing brings people together like good food. So when you're cooking for the ones you love, why trust anyone but Joseph's Market? Joseph's Market is famous for their fine meats. Plus, no one makes sausage like Joseph's. They have 32 rotating flavors like Mexican chorizo, teriyaki pineapple, or spinach and feta. So there's something for everyone. You know, an apron is just a cape worn backwards. So be a superhero at your next cookout with fresh meat and sausage from Joseph's Market on Front Street in Waterville. Find them at josephsmarketmain.com and like them on Facebook. Book. Nokian Tires, available at 201 Tire Battery and Service Route 201 Vassalboro, your complete auto center. Mechanics you can trust, Nokian Tires to keep you safe on the road. Plus, 201 Tire Battery and Service is a state inspection station. They have batteries and accessories, including custom battery cables available. And of course, those great Nokian Tires. 201 Tire Battery and Service, Route 201, Vassalboro. At PJ Diggs, they know septic systems. Maybe your existing system is failing or it's a new house lot. You need new installation. Call PJ Diggs. They can bring their site evaluator to design the right septic system. Headed to camp? Ditch the outhouse for a newly installed system. How about a septic system for your campsite? Imagine your own private campground. Already have a septic design? PJ Diggs can install it for you. Call 431-4299. That's 431-4299. At PJ Diggs, they know septic systems. One third. Hinkley Road, Canaan. Mike Violet, AJ Knight, back here live at halftime at Skowhegan Area Memorial High School. It's brought to you by Hammond Lumber Company, serving Maine and New Hampshire from 22 locations. Your building project partner, HammondLumber.com. Skowhegan with a nice free and easy 3 0 lead here at halftime. They scored in the first period on a goal by Sophie Noyes. We have replays. Yes, okay. sir. You know we do. Of course we do. Don't ever doubt. In fact, you'll find them on the score on uh, the uh, what morning drive as well. They're all over the place. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll free. have highlights tomorrow on opening drive. Absolutely free. We'll also post them up on social media later on. And of course, the complete game will be at centralmainsports.com in the vault. So Noy scored at 7:50 of the first period. One nothing Skowhegan. That was the score at the end of one. And remember, Hawks get two in the second. First one by Grace Mayo at 3:53. Yeah, the funny thing is you see the first one, Noyes kind of got a chip in close. This is kind of the same thing as Conway got that cutaway and didn't do it, and then Mayo just kind of cleaned it up there and somehow squeezed it through like six pairs of legs, it looks like, as you watch the replay. And then here is goal number three. This is by Layla Conway after kind of a flurry in front. First a deep shot, as I recall. Yeah, it got way out there to the box. Looked like it was a miscommunication at the half circle and then get it in and then Con, uh, LeBlanc gets kind of that high shot as uh, the goalie went out to right, went out to challenger, and then Conway kind of benefits from being right place, right time. It looks like gets a tip in on something that was going to go in anyway. But, you know, whatever. I touched it last. I get the goal. Sorry. You get an assist. You still get a point. Works for me. 3 nothing <laughs> penalty corners. Only two for Skowhegan. None for Oxford Hills. And Galen, if you can get a shot of the two officials beyond the scores table there, the gentleman facing you. Talking to his referee counterpart is an old buddy of mine, Gary Gorman oh, from Waterville, who I think Gary was two years ahead of me, so he's class of 76. Soccer player at Waterville and a great hockey goaltender. Okay. Gomo, as he was called back then, <laughs> could play some serious goalie. A terrific hockey goalie. And he's been officiating hockey soccer, and lacrosse since it came into vogue in this area. And I haven't, I haven't talked to Gary. Last time I saw him was, uh, was before a hockey game when he was officiating. So I walked down the stairs here before the game. He's down talking with his counterpart there. He's one of those guys who probably weighs the exact same now as he did in oh, 1975. I so I guys. hate those guys. Yeah, I hate those guys. If you look at Gary, 
I mean, there's still not an ounce of fat on <laughs> his body there. Actually, great shot from Galen as he zoomed back out. He kind of disappears behind yeah. that two-by-four I mean, holding up the roof. He's, he's always had, you know, that – I mean, here we are in our 60s now, and Gary's a couple of years older than me, so he's got to be like 65. And he still looks like he did when he was 17, but a great guy, guys. great hockey goaltender. And he has officiated – he was telling – I think Gary's officiated everything but basketball and baseball. Everything else has been – Fair game, and now he's doing field hockey, which I wasn't sure he could do or he was doing. And I, I said field hockey. He goes, "Hey, I can blow a whistle just like anyone else." <laughs> I can blow a whistle. <laughs> so good to see Gary well, here. Credit to him too, because as we know, if there's one thing that besides just athletes in general, we would love to see for the sports, it's more referees exactly. in general across the board. Exactly, and he does a terrific job. He's right on the play. Still, he's going. He's he's just. I mean. In is uh, still as the in the same shape that he was back then, which you know I I hate him for. Other than that, he's a really great guy. <laughs> You're in really great shape, and I hate you. But hey, yes. thanks for doing what you do. Good to see you, Gary. <laughs> All right, headed to the goal down to our left for Skowhegan, Michaela Provost, who has very, had a very quiet first half. I hope she took her five-hour energy at halftime. Oh, by the way, speaking of uh, Michaela Provost as well, the other stat for you, 10-0 to zero shots on goal, yeah, Skowhegan. That's a little significant. Gabby Wright down to our right has been busy. Oxford Hills ball to start the second half. Joseph immediately jumped on by Quinn and Skowhegan really forcing the issue here, and the Riverhawks able to steal. I was say, that was a dangerous pass because Conway nearly picked that one off going towards the goal. Indeed. Kaylee Bruce. Now it's going to be Gentry right at the line there. Back to Siren. Lucy has it roll over the stick. On the near side to Price. Price right there to Atwood. Atwood trying to go deep. Curling in for Skowhegan. Mayo, free hit by Atwood, bounces inside off a Oxford Hill stick. Quinn with it. Quinn turns. A shot couldn't get anything on it. Easily kicked out by Wright. Yeah, Quinn, like you said, just when she went to pull that, I think drug her stick through, yeah. and so just nothing on it. Just a roller. Yeah. All right, kept in by Price. Now Atwood. Skowhegan has turned the heat up here. To start the third, they had a slow start in the first. Not so much here in the third. Whacked in by LeBlanc. It's kicked out by Wright. Atwood at the top. Inside, far side, Bruce. And it's going to go to Oxford Hills. Yeah, it's ironic Skowhegan wears, uh, is wearing white because it feels like they're like a snowball. Sometimes we've seen, I think a few games we've seen it maybe takes them a second, but man, they start rolling downhill and they yep. roll downhill. That snowball gets bigger and bigger and bigger. LeBlanc between the legs of Joseph goes in, shoots blocked. And I think that hits Lauren Millett, number 22 in green. And Millett will belt it up. Yeah, I think she got a stick on it. It was a nice move by LeBlanc to free herself up for the shot, though, to split those defenders. Price took it away from Turgeon, and they give it back to Turgeon and Oxford Hills. Abby Tui rolled it up, bounces over Kennedy, and Provost actually has to come out and kick it away. So <laughs> Michaela has something to do for a change. That's uh, the first. I th Is this, this going to be a penalty corner? I believe so. Looked yeah. like it took him a no. Wait, took it back. It looked like they were set up, but now it's going to be a free hit here outside. Okay, the box. all right, it's a free hit outside the box, and it's Tui. Still no penalty corners yet for Oxford Hills. Two for Skowhegan. Stolen by Person. Person up to Turgeon. and Turgeon plays it back. Nice block there by Quinn. Sliding block Tui. Ball comes. Toward the corner, whistle, it goes to Skowhegan. Uh, way to go by Quinn, especially after she had to sit down for a few seconds because of an injury in the first half. We're going to kill that fly before this game is over. <laughs> Here's Mayo. <laughs> Mayo ahead to Quinn. Quinn runs up the backside of person. They give it to Skowhegan. Up to Mayo, couldn't handle. Joseph with it. Okay, Joseph. Kind of fanned on that. Atwood steals at midfield. 
Atwood stopped on a stuff. Good check there by Joseph. This is kind of what we saw in the first period, right? But Skowhegan had an initial flurry, and then Oxford Hills was able to have some possession, just couldn't do anything offensively with it. All right. And yeah. then Skowhegan got that goal and just kind of controlled the rest of the first and the second quarter. Price says it's knocked out of bounds. High stick there by Oxford Hills' Cassie Tertian. Gives us a chance to give you a game reset. Brought to you by Midstate Machine. If you're looking for a career, check out the Machinist Development Program at MidstateUSA.com. Third period, 10.58 to go in it. It's 3 nothing. Skowhegan, Noyes, Mayo, and Conway. The Skowhegan goals in our game reset brought to you by Midstate Machine. Back it is Kennedy. And Kennedy hits it and a whistle. It'll go to green. A little too high on that follow-through. And again, Oxford Hills in the first period, I thought, was able to get a little bit of possession, just offensively couldn't do anything. He's going to get a Skowhegan flat tire change here. Oxford Hills here in the third period has had some possession, just offensively needs to find... Shots. A shot would be huge because they still don't have one on goal. All right. The Vikings get it near the circle. Now Conway able to run it off and clear it up to Quinn. Quinn trying to scale it by person. Person and Quinn go at it, and it goes out of bounds in front of the scorer's table off Quinn. Heck of a had defensive uh, possession there by Person. Person fires it up. Stopped by Atwood. Sidelines for Quinn. Quinn. Goes to the backhand, stick handles between the legs, got it up for noise. However, broken up back by Person. Tui over midfield. Tui ahead for Hammond. Hammond taken away by LeBlanc. And Laney able to scale it in. Up to Quinn, bounces. Joseph picks it up. Joseph and a whistle. Ooh. Insult injury to Conway there. She got kind of tangled up in, with a stick and hit the deck, but they whistle on the Riverhawks. Yep. Gentry. Gentry's such a good defensive oh. player. Tower of strength. Her and Kennedy. She is so good back there. Skowhegan is so good, and they're, you know, made even better when, when Sir, uh, excuse me, when uh, Sedalia Savage is in there playing defense in the middle of the field. One hundred percent. Now Quinn out and Daja Albarico in, number five. Quickly the pass up to Daja. Right side, belts it up, and Wright will let it hit the side of the cage. Uh, nice uh, read there by Wright. She read that foul ball very well, went over the line. Definitely a foul ball. Even a major league baseball umpire could recognize that. <laughs> Even Angel hurt. Well, maybe not. Yeah, Angel, that's maybe. you're asking too much. Yeah, it's pushing it too far. I say Sadali Savage. I think one of the. Oh, oh wait. All right, inside to Albarico. It's run off, though, by Millets, but Skowhegan retains control noise, and whatever that is is a violation <laughs> on Skowhegan because I don't know. It goes back over to Oxford. I was going to say, Sadali Savage, one of the best skilled players yeah. in the state. I was going to say, the best stick handle I think I've seen to this point is uh, Hendrickson from Coney. Oh, she's great. What a great little player. I, I had no idea how good she was. Yeah, her she's outstanding. The skill she has with her field hockey stick is second to none. And you know how we were talking, and I was basically talking about how Hendrickson must be one of those kids who is in the backyard. Is going inside here is LeBlanc. LeBlanc on the backhand, stuff there, and Oxford Hills getting it outside the circle. Noise right back in the circle. Now the Vikings able to clear it up, or right back in with it. Atwood, Skowhegan with a ton of pressure here and a whistle. And we're going to get a penalty corner. I'll finish my Hendrickson story later, but right now we're going to get the third penalty corner for Skowhegan here in the game. And that's just what the Riverhawks do, right? You can't clear, you can't clear. You don't even give up a shot that possession, but they just stick at it, stick at it, stick at it, and now you get this free stroke here with a chance where their last goal came off of one of these opportunities. Conway, as always, back to the top. LeBlanc couldn't handle it. Now the wind-up, the shot bounces wide. Atwood is there, pokes at it, pokes at it again. Also in deep is Albarico. Atwood takes a poke at it. It's in a goal for Skowhegan. I think that was noise again. I think finally Quinn was able to get it somewhere, and I think noise just finally cleared that one up. Comes yep. at 8.02. And Noyce just cleaned that one up. Just standing center there is able to put it in. So the second of the day for Sophie Noyce. 
And it's a 4 nothing Skowhegan lead. So much pressure, and eventually with all that pressure, something is going to give. Well, it's like you said, too. Pokes at it, pokes at it, pokes at it, and then finally just finds somebody standing in the center center box there and is able to, for noise, just kind of a chip in. In the game for Skowhegan, first time, Jaden Dodge, a freshman. She wears number seven. As Paula Dowdy gets some of her people in with a four-hole lead. Six and a half to go in the third. Skowhegan in the catbird seat here, leading four to nothing. Midfield, LeBlanc. What a gorgeous afternoon for a sport of any kind out of doors. Completely agree. Alberico hustles up, beaten to it there by Person. Now just in the game, Dodge with a chance to handle it, and as soon as she gets a stick on it, a whistle, and it goes to Green. Mike, you're finishing your thought on Hendrickson. Yeah, um, uh, her mom, who has ties to Waterville, no surprise, lived in Waterville <laughs> for seven or eight years. Her mom and I talked before the game about that. Um, then we saw the game, and I made the comments that I made. She messaged me the next day on Facebook. She had gone to centralmainsports.com to the vault and watched the replay of the game there, which is available to you 24-7. And she goes, you know what? Caroline wasn't one of those kids that was in the backyard. Really? with Because I, I said, you know, we were talking about, you know, you call a kid who spends all kinds of time at a gym playing basketball a gym rat, yep. and in hockey they're rink rats. I don't know what we call field hockey players who are that version of rat in the nicest way possible, but she said she wasn't like that. It's just her natural skill. Yes, she works at it now, but as a kid, she, you know, when she was 9 or 10, she was not doing that, which I was kind of surprised by. Yeah, because like I said, she is by far and away the most skilled with a yeah. field hockey stick in her hand, and it's not close. Yeah, I mean, she does things we've never seen before. Yes. I've not seen a Skowhegan player do, that's for sure, I with agree. all the great ones here. But Caroline Hendrickson from Coney, holy boy, she is dazzling with a stick and a ball. The backhanded passes, the backhanded shots. The one-handed control yes. while she boxes out a defender. Yes. And let's give Coney the respect while we're talking about her. Field hockey this year, I, I know normally very big in Central Maine. There are a lot of good teams yeah. in Central oh, yeah. Maine this yeah, year. We're loaded. And I was talking to Larry Mahoney on the show this morning on opening drive. He had a great game yesterday between Belfast and Nokomis. Belfast stayed undefeated, beat Nokomis one to nothing. And Nokomis, that's their first loss of the year. So I mean, it's going to be a loaded field. Obviously, Skowhegan, Mount Ararat's good. Meso, obviously, we saw is good. Winthrop beat Meso. Coney's very good. Yep. I mean, it's loaded. Yep. Yeah, I mean, the, the Winthrop beating Skowhegan, you know, it's just, you know, and, and, and this week, in the last week or so, we've had that game, a Class C team beating a Class A team. And, of course, Saturday night we had Levitt, a Class C football team, beating the Class A champs in Oxford Hills in football. Right. So it's, uh, it's great. It's absolutely great. Uh, Central Maine loaded for sports. Oh, and because. we'll see Levitt Friday night playing against Lawrence, and we'll see Noah Carpenter, one of the most exciting players in the state. He's a quarterback who has stepped in for the Fitzpatrick Trophy winner, Eli Soren. And Oxford Hills, while losing Saturday night in front, noise off the side of the net, still in good shape. So are you saying we're going to see diametrically opposed game plans on Friday? Uh, I, I do think that John Hersom is going to open it up more Friday night because I think he's going to have to. It's not going to be a situation where they carry the ball 60 times 60 Friday night. 60 times, again. Like they did against Coney. There's a bad pass, but not intercepting it was Alberico and... Oxford Hills able to at least relieve a bit of pressure there for a sec. Just a sec. And now whistle. This will stay with Skowhegan. Alberico slaps it inside the circle, and that's offside. Yes. Now whistle against Riverhawks. Yeah, again, that game also in the vault. Uh, some technical difficulties for the first half. Right. You can still Just, see the highlights. Yeah, videos there, the sound is the issue. So don't go turning up your <laughs> device. It's yeah. it's it, it's us, not you. It'll cut it at halftime. But uh, the statistics, the two, I was telling uh, the AD here, Mr. Day, about it. Mr. Jones. Uh, Mr. Jones, excuse me. Um, I said the two stats I think you really need to know is, you know, obviously 60 carries for 501 yards, that one. And the fact that Lawrence, despite the fact that they ran that many plays, was in third down twice. Twice. That's an amazing stat for sure. Just amazing. 
So Levitt at Lawrence in high school football Friday night at 7. We have 2.05 left here in the third. Skowhegan has expanded their lead to 4 to nothing. They've dominated the play, keeping it in the zone now. Dakota Morgan jumps up on it, gets it ahead to Tui. Tui can't clear, keeping it in is Price. Price, though, loses out of bounds. And it'll be put into play by Abby tu- tu- Tui. Excuse me. Fanned on it, stolen by Mayo. Mayo's got a goal. Grace Mayo spins. Got it ahead for Noise. Noise tries to angle it up. It's blocked. A stuffed job there. Jumping up to keep it alive, Dodge. Jaden Dodge, freshman, and it's going to go to Oxford Hills with a minute 20 to go in the quarter. Uh, see, these are the issues, though. Even though Oxford Hills, like you said, momentarily gets out of trouble. That one gets whacked out on the sidelines on the free uh, hit. It's going to roll and probably do a 4-5-40 if it keeps on rolling four, like five, that four, down the track. <laughs> Better watch out. The Raiders are going to draft it then. Uh, <laughs> Hands of stone, but they can <laughs> run a 4-2-40. <laughs> yep. Uh, but that's like you said, though, momentarily, momentarily a, a, a breath uh, or a little bit of a release there because Scout Hegan just charges right back and puts you under. Yeah, I mean, you, you can't take a breath. I mean, you're, you're just on your heels trying to get it out. And as you can see now, Scout Hegan just dominating here. Bruce keeps it inside the line. Now it's going to go to the Vikings. 40 seconds to go in the quarter. Up the far sidelines, knocked out by Scout Hegan. Sophia Estes will drive it in. It's been another rocking chair game here for Michaela Provost, who has handled one ball. Not even a shot. It wasn't even a shot. It just came toward the side of the net, and she kicked it away. And that was just because she was bored. Right. That's how it's been. Five of seven games shutouts for Skowhegan. A shutout for Skowhegan and Provost through three. We have finished three here in Skowhegan. The score, the Skowhegan Riverhawks four, the Oxford Hills Viking not Vikings. That is nothing. You are watching and listening to high school field hockey on the place for local sports. Sports Radio 1160 WSKW, the score. Are you fed up with high prices at the pump? Do monthly utility bills drain your wallet? If you're nodding your head yes, Renewal by Anderson is your best solution. They custom build and install weather-tight replacement windows and back them with a generous, fully transferable limited warranty. Call now to schedule your free design consultation. Plus, take advantage of this limited time offer with incredible savings and attractive financing. The better way to a better window. Renewal by Anderson. Central Maine Community College in Auburn. Over 40 academic degrees and programs recognized as some of the best in the United States. Nursing, criminal justice, forensic, psychology, IT, education, culinary arts, and so much more. Offering one of the lowest tuition rates in New England. Plus, a top-seeded national champion producing athletics department. Central Maine Community College in Auburn. Find your passion. Go to cmcc.edu. Over 30 years ago, Paul and Jonna Bowen set out on a mission to help aging Mainers stay in their own homes. Assistance Plus grew from their passion, dedication, and integrity, where clients come first. Today, Assistance Plus serves not only the elderly, but clients with developmental and behavioral health challenges. Assistance Plus, here for you today and through all points of your life. Mike Violet, A.J. Knights, back here at Skowhegan Area Memorial High School. Galen Neal is our videographer here today. 4 nothing Skowhegan, Riverhawks and Cruise Control tomorrow. We're up in Pittsfield, MCI hosting Foxcroft Academy Boys Soccer, game time 3.30. Are you popular up there? Am I popular? In Pittsfield, I don't, I don't, I don't uh, have Not many sure. connections there. Okay, just making sure. I'm sure there's somebody there who at one point lived in Waterville and worked with your dad, or you went to high school with. I'm sure somebody like that is in Pittsfield. I, you know, that could very well be. Um, I'm trying to think, um, nothing comes to mind. But we're going to we'll go see. anyway, we'll by Gary. We'll be there. We're going to go anyway. 3.30 game time tomorrow in Pittsfield. MCI versus Foxcroft Academy. Then on Thursday night, under the lights in Oakland, EL at Mesolonsky in boys soccer at 7. Levitt at Lawrence in football Friday night at 7. Here we go, fourth period. 
Skowhegan with a 4 nothing lead. Worth noting, too, I know we don't get ahead of ourselves, obviously, you gave through Friday, but Saturday you'll be back here. Uh, it's actually it's in Fairfield. Oh, sorry. Yeah, my, uh, that, was my, that was my mistake. Like a quick schedule change. Yes, it? that is in Fairfield. It's Skowhegan and Lawrence, the reigning Class A and Class B champs, and there's a slip and fall there by Hammond. Lawrence struggling so far this year. Again, hit by huge graduation losses. Maddie Niles is back, but pretty much the whole cast of characters led by Miss Mainfield Hockey, Hope Bushard, having graduated. Yeah, that's that's a big one to replace, not just for oh. for skill, but leadership. Uh, she's quite possibly the best leader I've seen in high school sports in all my years of doing this. I mean, I believe it. She just just got this aura to her that just made such a difference. And in front, Conway, and a save by Wright with a pad. And Conway with another shot there, and I think Wright had to make a save there, and now we've got a penalty corner. The second of the half, and that's four overall. Uh, to your point there, run that one one more time for you. Oh, we get Actually, we've seven. got a change in goal. This is Charlotte McGreevy in goal. The goaltender, right, has a bag of ice. After this penalty corner, we'll have Galen get a shot of that. There's one right on the doorstep. Atwood tries to redirect and can't. She can get down eventually to the Oxford Hills bench, 44 right there, right with an ice pack. I don't know specifically where she might be hurt. Anyway, we'll keep an eye on her. It looks like it might be a shoulder. Yeah, she's putting it inside. Her jersey on the shoulder. So we have McGreevy in goal. McGreevy's a sophomore with a four to nothing deficit. Twelve forty left in the fourth period. Intercepted by Price. Price midfield. Back it goes to Kennedy. Kennedy over midfield. Stopped there by Tui. Tui blasts it up. Shut down by LeBlanc. Laney whacks it up down the far side for Skowhegan. Faith Pease. And a violation on the Riverhawks. All right, well, they reset here. Here's that last stanza. We uh, Right before the penalty corner, we see Conway get that shot in the scrum. McCreevy, you know, right into the fire, right? There's a nice little block yep. there, and then Conway just sticks with it. I'm surprised. Uh, that was, I think, Quinn? No, Quinn's got longer hair. I have to track down who that was. There was a second shot there, but that knocked it out of bounds. But, hey, you don't get a breath against this Skowhegan team. Nope, and they're not giving one now. Conway inside the circle. Conway backhands it in front on the doorstep. Noise can't get it in. Still loose. McGreevy, and it goes in. A backhander goes in, and it is five to nothing. And running out with that ball is Faith Pease. So I think she got it. But you will tell us for sure with the replay. Won't you? Yeah, I'm surprised Conway held onto that for as long as possible and then looked for Noise. He was looking for the hat trick, and the Noise couldn't get, uh, gather. The defense doing a nice job there. Yeah, I think you're right. That popped out to number 11. We stuck it in. So Faith Peace comes in off the bench. Bang! Puts one in. And Skowhegan with a 5 nothing lead, looking to pitch their sixth shutout in eight starts. Yeah. Giving up only three total goals on the season. LeBlanc up to Atwood. Mason rolls it up. Whistle. So Oxford Hills with a not a young team, but an inexperienced team, and certainly a learning lesson here today against Skowhegan. That is for sure for rookie coach Haley Holman. Wow, the phrase we used all spring, right, is iron sharpens iron, and, it, yep. you know, Playing Skowhegan may not be fun when you go through it and you get the result. It's going to make you better. Yep, no doubt. All right, up the right sidelines, person couldn't handle. Noise fanned on it. Conway comes up, backhands it in. Joseph right there, double teamed, and Conway with all that speed took it away, but Layla not able to keep it in. That's a green ball, yep. 
1025 left, and picking it up is person to put it in. And Sophie Noyes took that one right in the gut, but just shakes it off. Don't let him see your pain. Right. Conway. Inside the circle. Goes to the forehand and blindsided by person, and person took it away, but we're going to get a penalty corner. Now, nice job by person there. Conway, I think, also got that a little bit out further than she wanted to, but still was able to, I think you see her asserting herself here in this fourth quarter, specifically as sort of a playmaker. And I, to be honest, I think it's a nice job by Oxford Hills that she's not on the, the score count yet. Uh, or excuse me, doesn't have a couple more goals because she's been cutting across the face of the goalie all day. Conway. A hard shot to the top to Quinn. Ellie calms it down over to LeBlanc, lets it fly. It's loose and it rolls wide. McGreevy, I believe, got a piece of that. Take a look on this. Nice job there, calming it down LeBlanc. A nice, easy shot. I, I, I'm i not sure if the, on the replay, tough to tell if it got through. McGreevy, Conway, and Peace were both there, I think, looking for a tip. So I'm not sure if one of them caught it before it got to her. All right, Oxford Hills hemmed in. Far side, it is Estes. Estes up midfield, stopped there by Laney LeBlanc. You can always tell Laney with that yellow headband. Are you a headband guy? Uh, nah. Nah, I was more of a uh, bandana guy. I was just going to say, that's what I was. Yeah. Because I never cut my hair. When I, well, uh, when I start, uh, believe it or not, I, I was a distance runner. 40 years ago, I actually ran a marathon. How has this never come up? Um, we always just talked about you playing baseball. Of course, I weighed about 180 pounds back then, well, which is was, probably I hear about you. a buck less than I weigh now. But anyway, um, I, I took up running when I was like 20. And um, I started wearing a bandana all the time just to soak up sweat because... I sweat, and just the other thing is in the summer to keep the heat, the sun off. And yeah. So I became a, a bandana guy, and I had a like a you know whole array of different colors. My mother bought me a bunch of bandanas. Uh, I, white and so. black for me. I started wearing them. I wore them. I think one season for lacrosse under my helmet, and then I would wear them in the summer for marching band. Marching band. Yes, sir. What did Four you play? Bear tone. Ooh, low brass. Nice. Who knew? Uh, 2000, 2006 state finalist. Wow. You hide the stuff from us. I didn't see this on your resume. Conway, <laughs> inside the circle. I think it actually says marching men on my resume. Not not as an experience thing, but as part of you know the entertainment field, it mentions it. Right. Was there any, do you have any, any band camp experiences in the summer at all? Or uh, Yeah, I mean, we did it every summer. Uh <laughs> We once got in a fight going to buy said bandanas <laughs> with a stranger. A band fight. No, I'd this pay... is a complete stranger. Oh, okay. I was oh. going to say, I'd pay money for a band fight. <laughs> All right, out of bounds. Lillian Smith in the game for Skowhegan. Smith getting some playing time. Another one of Paula Doughty's freshmen. I was one of the few musicians that played a sport. I once missed uh, missed a practice because I got my bell rung once in lacrosse. And so you, you 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 couldn't play. No, I had such a I had a splitting headache. Yeah, I uh, we were playing. Uh, it was a clear attempt, and I was playing attack at the time. It was my senior year. I picked one off, and I had my eyes downfield the whole time, not paying attention to our biggest defensive player who was coming straight at me. And you ever you ever seen those those blindside blocks where the guy running doesn't see it coming? It looked like that. Yeah, that was me. No band for AJ. No. They were not happy about it either. <laughs> he is on the banned injured list. <laughs> Unavailable today, injured. We need another baritone. Yeah, please, please sub. I'm gonna uh, off day for me, day to day. <laughs> Aren't we all? As somebody once said. Here's Mayo up the near side. Six minutes to go in this one. Five nothing, Skowhegan. And Noise and Joseph fight for it. Joseph gets the ball after the whistle. Now, speaking of someone who knows to go, needs to go on injured reserve, how about the Jets not at all addressing the quarterback position? Well, they did sign Trevor Simeon today Ooh. to be probably their practice squad quarterback. So there's that. Yeah, 
Thank goodness. Right. And I played the audio this morning on opening drive of the rant by Joe Namath yesterday. Oh, I saw on, some of the, the on, transcript on, of on that. On the Yes Network and ESPN New York. He was on with Michael K. <laughs> he, he wants to, he wants, he, he wants Zach Wilson out of town yesterday. Yesterday. Yes. Send him to Kansas City, he said, so we can back up Patrick Mahomes and learn something. <laughs> Joe Willie Namath. The greatest quarterback in Jets history. Look at this move here by LeBlanc. Takes it all the way in. Open net, sliding it. Did it go in? I know. I think that McGreevy got back just in time, I think, to bounce that off the side. Yeah, Olivia White in the game just slid it wide. So, Skowhegan will have another penalty corner there. Fourth of the half. Sixth overall. And Sophie Noyes with Conway out of the game will... Start it up. Four and a half minutes to go in this one. Five nothing Skowhegan. Paula Doughty with some of her second teamers in. The slide over to Price. Price partially blocked on the play, picked up. The turn and the shot by Atwood is spiked out to the sideline, saving it there. Estes. That was a really nice centering pass by Atwood. Just a good defensive stick there by Oxford. Lillian Smith taken away. Gentry still in the game. Steals, Jayla, so good. Kept the ball alive and got it up. Now a whistle and Atwood on the free hit. Atwood up to Smith, or excuse me, White. And a whistle, it goes to Oxford Hills. Yeah, you get the feeling that Scout Hegan has those players. I think like some of the Big Ten volleyball pl- teams where Gentry could probably play midfield or even, you know, attack position on a lot of teams, but it's just obviously such a great team overall. They say focus on defense and maximize your, you know, your impact there. And she does. And she's very good. Don't let me, don't let me say otherwise. She is so good. She is physically gifted and also has a real knack for the game. You can just tell she knows what she's doing out there. Skowhegan brings it in. LeBlanc swept it up. Far side, Pease, who's got a goal here. Faith Pease poked away from her. Oxford Hills picks it up. Vikings love to get one on the board just to make the bus ride all the way back to beautiful South Paris a little more tolerable. That is a haul from South Paris to Skowhegan. We used to, back in the day, call any trip to Oxford Hills High School a trip to where the elephants go to die. Because remember that from the Lion King? Yeah. The it seemed part. like it was that far. We're going to go oh. to the land where the elephants go to die. That's funny. Well, that's my favorite thing. We were looking, uh, you know, just one of the things I've noticed is there's all these different, uh, I think I saw today there's, uh, what, obviously there's a Rome, Maine. Yep. Um, oh, China, yep. You've seen the fi- famous sign, which is in China. Of Rome and China yeah. and Sweden, I have yes Denmark. I'm saying you can go around the world yep. without leaving the state. Yep, that one got some height. Yep. You you got to get a picture of that with you and uh, Ashley, yeah, and we do you know post it. it on put it up, make it as your cover photo on Facebook and <laughs> such. That's what you I know, really come to the sports games for. Social media advice from Mike Violet. I'll tell you what you do though. You wait till December when we have some snow. We have a snowstorm. Have somebody get a picture of you and Ashley in front of it. It's a great Christmas card, huh? That's not bad. Actually. Send it well, to your parents. We're getting married next year. Send it to the. You are? Am yeah. I DJing the wedding? You know, I didn't think about that. That's not a bad <laughs> idea. <laughs> you get married out there? Uh, no, in Glacier National Park. Whoa! I've never played a national park before. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not jonesing for the gig here, okay? But, you know, that'd be pretty cool. Montana, so, Western Montana, beautiful. Ashley actually said, I do, I, I will, yes. She well, said, when yes. we came to Maine, I did put a ring on it. But, yeah, now we're oh. going to make it super official. Oh, okay. But, actually, I like your idea. Christmas card. I mean, we need, obviously, something for a wedding invitation picture. That, I that think would I'll, work. I'll go out and take the picture for you. I like that. I got my new fancy iPhone 15 <laughs> with a great... Great camera. It, I like they it. They say the camera on this thing's awesome. I so. like it. I haven't taken any pictures with it yet. Here's LeBlanc. In deep. McGreevy. The goalkeeper moving with the ball. The ball is cleared out. We're down to 40 seconds left. 
I think that was the case there. You see LeBlanc as you see the replay here. Just goes right down the middle of the defense. I think just got a little bit too deep there and didn't pull the trigger. McGreevy, I think, is able to get an, an ankle on that shot but because the angle was so cut off. Smith and Tertian fight for it. It's awarded to Oxford Hills, 20 seconds to go. Here's, here's something you'll appreciate, Mike. I invited, I invited the boss man to the wedding because uh-huh. I told him if he comes, then we can record some stuff for work, so then I don't have to count his days off. <laughs> <laughs> Boy. That's, that's big brain thinking right yep, there. Yep, yep, big time. <laughs> All right, seven seconds left. Cleared down the sidelines, and that will run the clock out, and that is the end of that. A comfortable win today for the Skowhegan Riverhawks as they score in every period, and they end up winning it by five. Final score in this one. Skowhegan Riverhawks five, Oxford Hills Vikings nothing. Back with a postgame show after this on The Score. For us, it's a family business that is steeped in tradition. You know, our relationship with Waterville goes back a long ways. Over the years, we've been fortunate enough to grow, and we've been able to grow with the town. We look at the work that we do as something bigger than just the sale of a car or the servicing of an automobile. We're here to be a part of something bigger than just ourselves by giving back to the community with our time and our energy, because it's all about taking care of people. Notice the price of gas and oil lately? Thinking about a pellet stove? Pellets are a renewable resource that are economical, and pellet stoves don't have to be ugly or loud. Come talk to us at Somerset Stone and Stove. Let us explain why now is the best time to have your pellet stove installed. Wouldn't you love to have a gas stove or fireplace designed for your home? Let Somerset Stone and Stove design and install a Regency gas stove or fireplace that is just right for you. Let us customize your Regency gas stove or fireplace while you enjoy the beauty and warmth. Visit Somerset Stone and Stove in Oakland. When you're ready to tackle your next building project, no matter how big or small, depend on Hammond Lumber Company for the products and services you need. The knowledgeable staff at Hammond Lumber will be with you every step of the way and keep your project on schedule. From free estimating and project planning to design and drafting services, an extensive product inventory with a wide variety of brands to choose from, and of course, Hammond delivers from any of the locations across Maine and New Hampshire. Hammond Lumber Company, your building project partner. Mike Vile and A.J. Knight back here post-game at Skowhegan High School where the River Hawks have shut out the Oxford Hills Vikings today by a score of 5 to nothing. Skowhegan scored in every period, including two in the second. Sophie Noyes got him started in the first, scoring at the 7.50 mark of the first period. Skowhegan led there by a score of 1 to nothing. I was just trying to do the math. So this is win 606? Right, because the first win of the season was 600, and now they're 7-1, so that means six other wins. Let's run with it. I think it's 606. Noise here you see on the replay. Just right place, right time. That's actually the first few goals of Skowhegan. It kind of just came off being aggressive on those scrums. Then Mayo scored in the second period. Grace Mayo scored at 353. Riverhawks doubled their lead to 2 nothing at that point. And here you see... Conway cuts across there, can't get it quite through, and then Mayo, I don't know how that one found the corner of the cage there because there's like 10 bodies in front of it, but she found it. She did, 2 nothing there. Then Layla Conway late in the first half scored her goal today, her only goal today at 13-57, 3 nothing. Skowhegan at the break. And credit to the Riverhawks for this one because it ended up all the way, I think, to Kennedy, and it looked like it was a miscommunication there as you saw on the, the, free, uh, on the free stroke there, but... Look, I mean, after you see the result, maybe maybe not quite a miscommunication. Third period, Sophie Noyes scored at 8.02, second of the game for Sophie to increase the Skowhegan lead to 4 to nothing. I credit this one because, like you said, uh, I think ultimately Atwood, did not write down, I think gets an assist there. And as if when you see the highlight a little bit later, you hear Mike Violet say, pokes at it, pokes at it, pokes at it, and that's what kept it alive and ultimately got Atwood an assist. All right, 4 nothing there. Then to the fourth period we go. Faith Peace getting some playing time and getting on the score sheet with a tally with 319 gone in the fourth. Yeah, a little bit longer replay here. Peace, actually, I got her down for two shots because I think she had that second shot on the tough one that Conway uh, put in. And then here again, Conway makes the play. Man, held on to that ball forever, looking for noise across there. Nice defensive play initially, and then it just squirts its way to pieces. Right place, right time. Again, 
Uh, Scout Hegan's goals basically, I think, all came that way. It's not really the first shot you have to watch out for. It's the second and third. Yeah, it's the way they flood the net and flood the the, the circle, and uh, they're so good at it, and they've got so many good goal scorers. And they take advantage of it. If you give them an inch, they will take a mile, and they did here today. Surprisingly, penalty corners, only six for Skowhegan, which is kind of an unusually low number for them. Six to nothing. They held Oxford Hills without a penalty corner in the game. And I think on the season, like I said a couple times, Oxford Hills has really struggled to score. And still only two goals uh, total, both of them coming in the last game. Defensively, though, they haven't really – I think this is the biggest – uh, I think they've not given up more than three on the season, so this is the biggest deficit they've suffered. So defensively, I think they've been fairly sound. Unfortunately, it gets a team like Skowhegan, uh, you know, if you struggle offensively to clear, you're going to see what you saw today, which is Skowhegan just continue again and break like waves on rock. You can't clear, and they're going to keep coming at you, keep coming at you, and then eventually some of those you, you may block, I think, officially – I've got uh, 12 total saves for the Oxford Hills goaltenders. The problem is off those 12 saves, you get a lot of rebounds and you get five goals. So win number seven on the season for the Skowhegan River Hawks, and they have won three straight now after their only loss of the year against Meselonsky. Boys soccer tomorrow. MCI hosts Foxcroft Academy from Pittsfield. Game time is 3.30. We will have it for you here at centralmainsports.com and 1160thescore.com. Remember, all of our games always in the vault at centralmainsports.com. Go to centralmainsports.com, click on vault, then click on high school. All our games are there. Uh, and also shout out to CM Auto Group. Mm -hmm. for helping make high school sports possible. Exactly. Thanks for reminding me. Central Maine Motors Auto Group in Waterville, the dealer with no dock fees where cars and trucks always cost you less. Find them online at cmautogroup.com. So that's going to do it for us here today. For Galen Neal, our videographer, for AJ Knight, I'm Mike Violet saying so long from Skowhegan High School. Final score in field hockey today. Skowhegan 5, Oxford Hills nothing. This high school sports presentation on the place for a local sports, The Score, has been brought to you by Central Maine Community College, Central Maine Motors, Hammond Lumber Company, Mid-State Machine, Whittemore & Sons, Somerset Stone & Stove, 201 Tire Battery & Service, P.J. Diggs, Renewal by Anderson, Assistance Plus, Joseph's Market, the Harry J. Smith Company, and by Computer Improvements. For all your local sports action, keep it right here on The Place for Local Sports, The Score.